Hello all, today we'll be doing an illustration done in ink and watercolor. Um, and just a little recap, um, to get the watercolor going, the best thing to do is create a completed ink illustration. Um, you can always add more ink later, but if you get a, a strong ink illustration done, um, it helps the watercolor uh, effect come in easier because you know where you want to put color, you know where you need details or enhanced shadows as well. So I'm doing some line work with the ink here, building up values, some textures, enhancing, adding thinner, bolder lines. And when you feel like you're comfortable, um, then you can go on to the watercolor. Uh, this is being done on watercolor paper, which um, is totally great for ink, uh, but it's outstanding for watercolor because it allows the watercolor to slowly dry and it gives um, maneuverability with the brush and ability for you to alter effects in a, at your pace compared to regular paper. So here's my watercolor set um, and I'm just going to walk through what you need. You need a watercolor set, a cup of water, a brush, and ideally some paper towel or a rag, something to help dry up some areas or dry up your brush. So I want to do my skin tone first. So I have a palette built into my piece here. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow, mix it in there. So my brush has water on it. I'm typically going back and forth getting more water on the brush. I'm going to put a little bit of red with the yellow, we'll create a peachy color, and then I'm going to get a touch of brown. Mix it in there. Um, to test out my color, um, I can grab a scrap piece of paper and lay that out there and get to where I, what color I'd like to achieve. So then I can mix up a little bit of bat, a little batch, and I'm going to go in and start painting into that area. Just filling in, working loosely to fill that area in. Got a little bit of red and brown because now I can go on the outer edges of my face while it's still wet, add some deeper tones of skin color, and soften those into that area that's already wet. So I'm bringing in the color I mixed right here, and then I'm going to dry my brush a little bit and soften it all out. While the watercolor is wet, you can manipulate it and move it around. You won't get some, any weird lines. On the shirt here, I'm going to actually lay down water first. That's what I'm doing with the brush here. I'm just taking clean water on the brush. I'm going to make a blue shirt, then I make a little batch of blue and I put it in there. The interesting thing is if you wet an area first prior to putting watercolor down like a base of this blue, and then you lay the blue in, it goes in effortlessly into that area because it's already wet. Just adding a little bit of gray to my hair here. Uh, if you also have an area like that you think you put too much color and you can just blot it with a paper towel and lift it off while it's still wet and that'll get rid of most of the color in that area and you can try it again or just leave it alone. Now, because uh, I want my jawline to be a little bit darker and then fade lighter as I go into the face, I'm going to create a darker version of the skin tone, so with a little bit more brown. Sometimes I even add a little bit of purple. So I'm going to put it in the darkest areas, then I'm going to clean the brush and thin out the edges um, as they go more towards the center of the face and across the neck to create a gradient or a fade. So I'll do that around, like especially I'll hang out on the right side, try to do that on the right side of things. So again, I block out where I want the more the color to start, where the value to start. And then I clean the brush and soften where I want to fade it out. Similar, think about when you do pencil work, you know, you want to shade it out, out and lighten it up. And do, that's exactly what I'm doing here. Ooh, made a mistake there, added a little green. Again, blot it up. Now I'm going to put a deeper skin tone around that part of the forehead, and I'm just going to soften that out. And again, a little bit of drier brush with some clean water helps fade things out very nicely. So again, building up to my heart's content, softening it out, you can control it rather nicely. You don't need a sopping wet brush to do that either. Put in a little bit of purple. I want to, purple with brown uh, can help create a, a more intense, like dark value. Um, 
for the color brown. So I'm doing that a little bit on the skin tone. Just soften it in there. Touching up some of the hair. Over on the teeth, I just want to do a little, little bit of a light gray cast shadow, like at the underneath the lower lip on the teeth. So I'm going to put some in first, and then again, just soften that edge to create a, just a slight shadow. Created a light pink by just using mostly water with a little bit of red, a little bit on the there. But I'm going to put a little bit more. I just feel like the pink wasn't strong enough. That's better. Helps the lower lip stand out. I'm going to add, um, I look for the areas that I want to have more intense blue on the shirt, like where the shadows are. So I'm putting some straight blue in there and then softening it out. So the technique I'm mainly using is like applying the, applying the color I like and then softening it out with a, a, clean, a clean brush. Softening that out. If you think about with pencil, how you apply like some shading and then you can use like a blending tool to soften it out. That's how the brush is working here where I'm using a clean brush to soften out the colored area. Adding a little purple there for a little bit of variety. Depth of color to the blue. Very important to have your um, watercolor taped down uh, so it doesn't buckle. Now I'm going to be doing this large background, so I'm going to wet it all first with some just some water. You can see how it's shiny. That tells you an area is wet. Wherever I make it wet, um, that's the only place the watercolor can go if I apply it in there. It, uh, you know, unless I'm shaking the painting like up and down really fast, it's not going to travel anywhere else. So I'm doing a little gradient of red to orange. Just turning it around. I'm using gravity to kind of pull it in directions, and then I can take my brush and just clean it up against the face by edging it up there. Really quick little swipes just to kind of integrate it so the watercolor wants to flow right up against those areas. And I will turn the turn the watercolor paper, like lift up the board and move it around to try to help let the colors mingle. But I usually just let them do their thing. There you go.